Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. In today's episode, we're looking at five ways of making your character better by looking at the world map in which your character is set. Now, how is a map going to make your character better? Well, very simply, it's going to add a richness, an authenticity, and most importantly, and all, uh, most importantly of all, it's going to add a sense that your character belongs to the world and just is that much better than everybody else. So, what are the five ways? Way number one, look at the map. That may not necessarily be the first step. You look at the map and you identify where your character was born. And that's all important. Choose a spot. If the GM says, oh, your character can be from anywhere in these kingdoms, choose a kingdom from where your character is born. Choose a town, choose a village, choose a city. Choose something that's n that its, its name appeals to you and that you can pronounce it. There's no point in saying, I'm from Gwathk... Sorry, you're from where? I'm from Gwathk... What, where? It's that town on the map that I can't pronounce. If you've lived there all your life, your character will know how to pronounce that city's name. So choose a city whose name you can pronounce and whose name you like. Oh, what city are you from? Oh, I'm from Gwath Kimball. Oh, okay, what's Gwath Kimball like? So now you start to see where we're going. So once you've chosen the town, village, city, hamlet that you are from, you then need to look at the actual space itself. I've got my notes in my hand. So you need to look at your actual space. Now, is it a inspirational space or is it a cursed space? And by that I mean, growing up, was it a place full of inspiration where you could wander merry fields and look at great big vistas of mountains heavily blanketed under snow, ride the river on wooden logs and play with your friends out during the day and stay warm and toasty at night? Or was it a hard, cold environment where every day was a struggle for survival because you're out in the barrens and there's nothing out there and playtime is something that happens to others? So look at that as an influence. If I look at my own upbringing, I grew up on farms in some of the most beautiful parts of our country and wanted for nothing. I could run around and spend my days with my friends building forts and pretending to be soldiers and wizards and dragons and things with nary a thought for any kind of danger or trouble. I was free to let my imagination roam, and there were forests abound where I could go and find trolls and defeat them in their lairs, and it was a rather entertaining and rather fun experience. Growing up in town is a very different kind of experience. You learn different tricks. You're much more aware of people who may try to pickpocket you, or maybe you're a pickpocket yourself. So by just looking at where that place is on the map and asking the GM, what is the lifestyle of the people who are going to be living in here, that gives you so much richness to add to your character. If your character is cynical, why? If they grew up in such a magical place, what happened? Did the family have to move? Maybe you were ripped away from that. Maybe the town was attacked and destroyed by orcs. Maybe the star outpost that you were on was disassembled or decommissioned and you were returned to some planet that was smoggy. So it starts to add questions. So that's number one, is look at whether it's an inspiration or a curse and decide how that's going to impact on your character. Number two is you look at the area around said town, village, hamlet, starbase, wherever it is that you happen to have been born. Is that area dangerous or is it safe? Did you have to watch your step because wolves were going to attack you? Could you not travel too far into the asteroid field before being attacked by slavers who'd take you away to some foreign planet? You have to think about the location around and realize how that would impact you. Once I moved to the city in my childhood, it changed from being able to roam freely in all directions all day enjoying the sun to making short dashes to and from the shops because you didn't want to linger in the streets because it wasn't safe. It became a cloistered existence where reading became my escape out into the wonderful wilds rather than actually just escaping out into the wonderful wilds. 
And what became treasured memories was when we would then travel out to the wilds for a weekend and be able to roam freely again. So that changed one's perspective quite dramatically. So is it a dangerous environment or is it a safe environment? If it's a safe environment, you're unlikely to have learned a lot of combat skills. If it's a dangerous environment, maybe the softer skills were not looked at. Perhaps your character has very little in performance and persuasion because you don't need to persuade someone when the village is under attack. You need to get away from it or you need to defend it and there's no talking about it. You just do it. So looking at the area around the place of birth is very important in coming up with some rather interesting character development opportunities. Thirdly, you look at the population on that map. Are you in a heavily populated area where there's hundreds of cultures wandering in, trading, dealing, talking, experiencing and sharing? Or are you on the far-flung outreaches of space where no one ever visits and you only see five people a year? That will greatly influence your character. Deception skills are not needed when you only see three people a year. Persuasion skills are not needed when you only see three people a year. You are so happy to see them that you will probably either eat them or welcome them into your home and treat them as a long lost relative because they probably are. So if it's densely populated, your character is much more street smarts, much more world smarts, and much more likely to know what's going on with the rest of the space that they're in, with the rest of the map. If they're on the outside, they're not likely to. And again, that's a big influencer when creating your character. So, so far, we've got quite a lot of personal development just from looking at the map and, and looking at the surrounding areas on that map as to where you were born. Now, number four is you then look at the neighbours. What are the neighbours like? If you're on a border town, what are the neighbours on the other side of the border like? Is it hostile or is it friendly? Are there any out there or are you all alone? Who knows? Well, you do, and your GM does, and you can ask your GM these questions, and the GM should be able to answer, and if they say, oh, I don't know, well, then you either need to give him an answer or make sure that she gives you one. Either way, you need to know, because if they're friendly, well, then you might speak that particular language. So often I've had players sit around my table going, oh, I get to speak 500 languages, but oh, I'll choose that one, that one, that one, and that one. Well, why do it that way? Why not look at where you were born on the map and go, well, it makes sense that I've spoken to those people and those people. Yes, sure, of course, a wandering monk could have passed through who spoke a different language and you learned from that monk that particular language. I don't have a problem with that. But if you're stuck for inspiration, looking at the map suddenly gives you a whole bunch of answers without even asking. It really is that simple. If they're hostile, well then maybe your attitude towards the inhabitants of that town or even the species of that town is going to be pervasive. So when you're out adventuring a million miles away from home, well, when you see someone who's from that town or that species who's from that neighborhood, you might react differently than just treating them like every other NPC. So it's starting to give you a nuanced performance to moving forward and how you continue to engage in the game. And that's a very powerful space to be in. It gives you a really big, big opportunity to express a role-playing aspect, which we very seldom see. And then finally, look at the names of the areas that are around your character. If the names are places like Gwath Kimble, Lamondos, uh, Briar and Thirth, that sort of thing, they're very lyrical kind of names. It's not likely that your character's name is going to be, let's say, Philip, which is much more of a different sounding kind of name. So trying to match your name to the zone, to the map area, really helps. And then if your characters ever wander through that territory again, the rest of your players might be saying, you know, this sounds very similar to your name. You could even, and a lot of names come from this origin, is if, let's say, you are from the village of Bern, you could be Veros of Bern or Veros de Bern, or Veros Bern. You could pick up the town name as your own name. It's just a way of ingratiating your character more into the story than everybody else's, such as Bob and Sarah Smith, who have no link to the land whatsoever. 
So those are very easy five ways of using a map to create a very interesting little space for your character. Over and above all of the other stuff that you add in, this creates a really interesting space and a really interesting character. And it also shows the GM that you're interested in the GM's world. You're not just arriving, slapping your character sheet down and saying, all right, let's play, where are we? I've never been there, I don't know. So look at a map from time to time. Take the moment to appreciate the work that your GM's put into building or drawing that map and use it to your advantage to make a better character. And if you can do that, well, then you are certainly creating better characters to play with, which means they're far more fun. Anyway, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, join us on www.greatgamemaster.com where you can leave suggestions for video topics or leave a comment below where you ask for a particular uh, question of yours to be answered perhaps and uh, we'll certainly add it to the list. So until next time, I wish you the happiest of playing.